A Vision of Twilight by Archibald Lampman by a void and soundless river on the outer edge of space, where the body comes not ever, but the absent dream hath place, stands a city, tall and quiet, and its air is sweet and dim, never sound of grief or riot makes it mad, or makes it grim. And the tender skies there over neither sun, nor star. Behold. Only dusk it hath for cover, but a glamour soft with gold, through a mist of dreamier essence than the dew of twilight, smiles on strange shafts and domes and crescents, lifting into eerie piles. In its courts and hallowed places dreams of distant worlds arise, shadows of transfigured faces, glimpses of immortal eyes, echoes of serenest pleasure, notes of perfect speech that fall, through an air of endless leisure, marvelously musical. And I wander there at even, sometimes when my heart is clear, when a wider round of heaven and a vaster world are near, when from many a shadow steeple sounds of dreamy bells begin, and I love the gentle people that my spirit finds therein, men of a diviner making than the sons of pride and strife, quick with love and pity, breaking from a knowledge old as life, women of a spiritual rareness, whom old passion and old woe molded to a slenderer fairness than the dearest shapes we know. In its domed and towered center lies a garden wide and fair, open for the soul to enter, and the watchful townsmen there greet the stranger gloomed and fretting from this world of stormy hands, with a look that deals forgetting and a touch that understands. For they see with power, not borrowed from a record taught or told, but they loved and laughed and sorrowed in a thousand worlds of old. Now they rest and dream forever, and with hearts serene and whole see the struggle, the old fever, clear as on a painted scroll. Wandering by that gray and solemn water, with its ghostly keys, vistas of vast arch and column, shadowed by unearthly trees, biddings of sweet power compel me, and I go with bated breath, listening to the tales they tell me, parables of life and death. In a tongue that once was spoken, ere the world was cooled by time, when the spirit flowed unbroken through the flesh, and the sublime made the eyes of men far-seeing, and their souls as pure as rain, they declare the ends of being, and the sacred need of pain. For they know the sweetest reasons for the product's most malign, they can tell the paths and seasons of the farthest suns that shine. How the moth wings iridescence by an inward plan was wrought, and they read me curious lessons in the secret ways of thought. When day turns, and over heaven to the balmy western. Verge sail the victor fleets of even, and the pilot stars emerge, then my city rounds and rises, like a vapor formed afar, and its sudden girth surprises, and its shadowy gates unbar. Dreamy crowds are moving yonder in a faint and phantom blue, through the dusk I lean, and wonder if their winsome shapes are true, but in veiling. Indecision come my questions back again, which is real? The fleeting vision? Or the fleeting world of men?